Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. In this video, I will be installing this front door. Yes, I'm excited. So let's get started. My hot water heater froze last night, and that's a problem. That's, that's a significant problem. Thank God it was frozen when I got home, because if it didn't, it would have been running for however many hours. And I had just filled my tanks yesterday, so they're full of water. So I'd have had 200 gallons of water in my bedroom. That had destroyed my mattress. I'm lucky. All right, so I removed the door. Now I just want to clean this up a little bit. I have my early warning Doppler 3000, which let me down. It didn't freeze, but my hot water heater did. Mother fucking Okay, it's, it's understandable. So originally I had my Tyvek paper running up on top of my sill here. Uh, I'm gonna remove it down to here so I can get some wood to wood contact with this peel and seal. I'd like to call it a sill seal, but that is not what it's called. But your big box store will carry that product. All right, so I heated up that, that sill seal since it's like probably 30 degrees right now. It's probably warmer than that, but it was freezing last night for sure. So I'm just gonna cut two pieces about six inches long. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to take the backing off. I'm going to stick these right on the corners so it overhangs the corner right here just a little bit. I'm going to take my utility knife. I'm going to find that corner, stick my knife in and shoot straight up on an angle. I'm going to try to not use terminology that I'm used to, but it's kind of hard to. But what we used to always refer to it is as a, a pan. So I'm going to lay this so it's hanging down quite a bit and stick it on there. This one I'm gonna cut straight up. Don't ask me why, I'm just gonna do it that way. And fold this back down onto the, the sill. I'm just gonna take my stapler and put a few staples in. Now if it was warmer, this stuff would be a lot easier to put in, but for some reason it decided to be freezing last night. Do I still sound bitter? I think I do. I think I, I, I sense a little bitterness in your voice. Now I got a piece cut so that it'll run up about, you know, six to ten inches is generally good. Um, again, don't quote me on anything I do ever because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing what I feel like is a good idea. And this one I will cut. So basically what I'm making this, what I refer to as a pan, I'm just thinking about water. I started low, made sure everything overhung everything. Now this is gonna be your weakest point is right where that, that cut is. That's why I did that piece underneath it. And I've done a, so many different layers on top. So installing a front door is pretty much a two man job. I should say two people. Two people job? There you go, I don't wanna offend anybody. Such a sensitive world we live in these days, you know. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. I'm going to try to do this by myself. Well, I'm going to do it by myself. So I'm going to install this piece of wood right here, which will prevent the door from falling in. So I'm going to put this screw in on a diagonal. Now, I don't want to go too far in this way because I don't want a screw hole within a quarter inch of this end. So I'm gonna try to catch it right on the end here and go in on an angle. So what that piece of wood will do is prevent the door from falling in. Typically when you buy a door, it's already gonna have the casing on it, uh, brick molding, whatever trim type you wanna call it, but it's gonna have some type of trim on it. I'm leaving all that off so I can get all my spacing and all that pretty stuff right. So now since I have my pan done and this on there, I'm gonna go and temporarily install it, check it, make sure it fits too. I've never, I haven't, I haven't double checked measurements since the day I started. Where's my drink? Let's measure it. Nah, f that. Well, I know those stairs can support a couple hundred pounds. That's good to know. See, if you had another person, you could check to make sure there's no rocks or anything on the bottom of the door. I don't have such thing though. Why aren't you going in the hole? Oh yeah, they got. Oh shit. That's f***ing awesome. Oh yeah, baby. So now that I know it fits, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna silicone the shit out of the bottom of the door. You're looking for a happy medium on the lean. So I'm just gonna lay down a really fat bead of silicone 
right in the center of the 2x4. Don't be shy. And on the corners, I'm going to do a bead all the way across. Now, again, this is how I do it. There's probably another way of doing it. Please read the comments below for the, the expert's way of doing it. And I'm going to run a bead up the side, even though it won't be touching in all the points. I just want to check, make sure there's no big stuff on the bottom. So I'm going to put a screw into here. Now, I'm going to try to get it roughly where it's got to go. I probably should have had a shim ready and shimmed that so it was good on the bottom. But I didn't think that far ahead. You that looks good, actually. That almost looks really good. I'm happy. Now, since this door costs as much as a car that I once drove, I'm going to put it in very well. I don't remember the combination to the door. Oh, thank God, my phone's got 18% on the battery. Can you imagine if it was dead? I'd have to take the damn door out to go inside. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, be careful though. What could happen? Let's think about physics. Nothing can happen. Oh, we got good seepage. Good things have happened. So to start out, I want to make sure that this is flush all the way around. Obviously at this two points, it's going to be good and up there, it's going to be good. But down here, I want to make sure that this is flush here and flush there. Now, I got some play with it, but for the most part, you want to make sure it's good. So from the inside, you probably can't see me, but I'm going to look at this gap that's along the top and the gap that's on the bottom. So I can tell you that the bottom of the door needs to go that way maybe? I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I just play one. Hey, I'm out. Sure, I got a hammer. Yeah, I do. Look at that. That's crazy. Now I want to put this shim down as close to this, this uh, threshold as I can. Because if I come up high, it's going to end up putting a bow in this wood right here. Even right now, it's too high. So I'm going to put another one in. So that gap right now is perfect on the bottom. I'm also going to check the top. Now, one thing I'm not using on this is a level. The one reason I'm not using a level is because my trailer is not perfectly level. If I start leveling a door, a window, anything off of something that's just a fraction of an inch off, this will forever be a fraction of an inch off. So I'm using what I know is perfectly square, which is this door, as a level, okay? I'm making sure that my gap is equal all the way around the entire perimeter of the door with, in reference to the door frame. Now in some spots, it's, it's not good. I mean, this piece of wood is bowed in, which when I put some shims in, I will draw this down so it will be perfect. I think, I hope, and hope. God almighty, I hope. So right now I'm pretty happy with where the door is positioned. So I'm gonna start fastening this side, which is the hinge side first, and I'm gonna make sure it's perfect. I'm happy with where the door is positioned, so I'm not trying to move anything. I'm just trying to stiffen everything up all along this side, and then I'll switch to the handle side. I'm gonna be pre-drilling some holes right here with a countersink bit. I'll probably go every foot, which is probably overkill, but that's fine with me. And then my door stop is going to cover that, and I'll put trim nails into that, and it'll cover my screws. So I got a piece of, this is the base door stop right here. So since I want those screw holes right in the center, I'm going to scribe a, a pencil mark basically right in the center of it. I mean, roughly, it doesn't need to be dead nuts, but... No, I need you, I need you in my life. So I'm gonna pre-drill all these holes. You know what, now that I think about it, I'm gonna go boom and boom, right above and below the hinge. I'm gonna end up putting um, larger screws into these hinges. So I'm gonna take the shims and I'm gonna put it in right where that screw hole is. And I just want it to be snug. I don't wanna change anything. Hold those in place. Pre-drill it again. And then I'm gonna put a two and a half inch exterior screw into that. Good, good, and good. 
Nice, put a little star in it. Nice. Let's see how much we've jacked shit up. Oh, we have not jacked anything up. That is great. If anything, we have made it better. That's way overkill, what I've done there. Those are the gappies. Oh, the gappy is perfect. Oh, baby. I'm sorry, the camera angles suck, but I just I have it up on top of a golf cart. I mean, what the hell? So since I have such a large gap on this side, instead of filling it with shims, I cut some uh, pieces of three quarter. I ripped them the thickness of the wall. I don't want them sticking inside because that'll mess up my trim later. So I cut them at three and I guess it should have been four inches. I cut them at three and three quarters so I wouldn't screw anything up. So I'm gonna stick this in there. And that, you know what? I bet you a dollar if I just screw that on there, that'll be fine. Now since this one by six got a really big crown in it, um, I wanna push this out so that the door sits good. Everything sits pretty. So I hooked this clamp onto it. I've already fastened this piece in here. Just a little bit, I got the screw that's grabbing it. It's not going into the stud yet, or the jack. So I will clamp this. So by clamping this down, I'm pulling this over so that crown comes out of it. And I'll screw it in. He's got mold on him already. That's awesome. Thanks, thanks Home Depot. Actually, they're from Lowe's. So now we're just gonna shim this. Didn't want that to happen though. That was not in the plans. Yeah, no, no good. No bueno. Hey, that's hot. Mucho caliente, si papi. Ah, yes, si. How many times have I said this is the most stressful part of the whole project? Because I'm pretty sure I've said that a lot. Ah, I like it. Yes. Yes, sir. So I got about an eighth inch gap all the way along this edge. Right here it gets a little wide, but that's okay. Overall happy. Happy, happy, happy. Now, I wanna put these in. Now I cut a bunch of these, so I can put one more right down here. I'll do the same thing. And then right up here, I'll do the same thing and I'll catch these two screws and these two screws, that bottom one, I'll use some shims. Nice, nice. Keep dinging it up, you dumbass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything about it was perfect. Nope, wrong way, wrong way, spesh. How about a cheers? This door is coming in on a radius. So I wanna make sure that when it's at its point where the inside of the door is coming to the thing, coming to the frame, I wanna make sure that that gap is perfect. With the exception of right her, it's good. Do you hear it? Like, can you hear it? Like, I've installed some doors where it was like, eh, that's a little rough. But that is, can't wait to put the door stops on. That's when you know I'm drunk, because I can't catch my damn hammer. I flip that thing all the time. One of my coworkers told me that I need to get a, um, a vodka sponsor. And I think that's the greatest idea, because I will never get, like, any legitimate company to sponsor me. Like, that ain't happening. My videos are too uh, inappropriate, but like a vodka company? That's brilliant. Look at even these dogs agree. Come here, guys. Well, we don't do stairs. We can't do it. Incapable of climbing stairs. I'm gonna put one screw in the middle there. I got sawdust in my eye. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna have to go to the hospital and get my eye amputated. Oh gosh, it's all over. Oh no. Thank God, crisis averted. Jeez, that would have been horrible. I would have never heard the end of it. I told you so. I'm not gonna put any in the bottom here because I don't want any unnecessary holage right there. Where's the hammer? How do I keep losing you? Oh, I dropped it, remember? So now that I got the door where I want it to be and it's fastened in completely, I'm ready to install my door stops. Now I bought this weather strip sealant. You can get it at the big box store. Now I heated it up next to the kerosene heater. 
because that's the only heat I got in my house. It's got a double sided sticky tape already applied to it. Now on the vertical pieces and that top horizontal piece I got the half inch stuff. On that bottom piece since I made a smaller one I got a smaller sealant for it but it's all the same material same color so I'm just gonna apply it as straight as I can I don't want to pull on it and stretch it while I do it because over time it'll end up relaxing on itself so I'm just gonna lightly place it where it's got to go and then press it into where I want it you can see we got a little little weather stripping on there now did you do that I guess I did I guess I did do that so I got the weather stripping installed on all the pieces. I'm pretty sure this one goes in first. Yes, but how tight it fits. And I'm pretty sure I cut each one of these to fit in there. Champ ears. It's gotta go like this, right? Ain't no other way. So I'm just gonna put in a few nails here and there and then I'm gonna go on the inside, shut the door, and eye it and make sure everything's good. But I wanna make sure that deadbolt's locked in. Basically while I'm installing this, I'm looking at the squeeze out of the foam that I installed. I wanna have just a little bit of compression on the foam. I don't wanna to get too buck wild. This looks good all the way up to here. That's perfect. I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm really, I'm not seeing anything wrong. Trolls. I'm sorry for the lack of camera angles, but that was all I had. This, I'm like five feet off the ground here. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Just to let you know, I got my hot water heater fixed. I got a new one, replaced that old one. I need to buy a good one that, like a five, six hundred dollar one that goes in my crawl space and all this great stuff and has a heating element in it so that it doesn't freeze but i'm still going with el cheapo because i am el cheapo except for this project that was not cheap in my next video i will be installing the trim that goes around the door this is all pvc it won't rot it'll be there forever oh gosh we're gonna get the fucking comments pvc is very toxic to fish in the ocean yeah but it's not in the ocean it's not chemical free house okay there there is another chemical free house this is not the chemicals don't bother me i mean you don't develop a personality like this by not having chemicals in your life do you understand that our children these days are fed handfuls of prescription pills so that they would pay attention in class so they're going to be more fucked up than me living in a house that's got some chemicals in it, I think. Give him some Ritalin. He needs some Adderall. Give him some Wellbutrin. He's depressed. All of that shit, man. What the hell? I can't say that because of my job, but... If you felt this video was helpful and could be helpful to somebody you might know, make sure you share it on your favorite social media, tag them, do all that great stuff that people do on these medias of socialness. And that'd be great. Thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. I don't know. I missed I missed a couple in there, but share it. I got them all. I think I did. All right, cool. So I'll see you on the next video.